That's uh, okay. Cool. So yes, we think about target. When you think about target transitions, one of the first words that should come to mind is precision. Um, even right now, the target layout is going to change as we go on, but for right now, they're fairly easy targets. Um, but still, you need to be precise where you move the gun to. Why is that important? If you aim at the big brown thing, where do your bullets go? Somewhere, Somewhere in the big brown, big brown thing. thing. Somewhere in the big brown thing. Yeah, Charlie's Delta. Like, oh, who knows what happens? Um, also, it's important to put out. I want to talk about your vision and related to target transitions. So, when I'm moving the gun, how should that go? Like, it, you know, maybe I could just, you know, I target here, target here. The sight comes across. I watch it. When I get to the target, I fire. That's no good. Does that sound reasonable? No. Why? You want to get your eyes there first. Why is that important? Faster. No precision. Oh, so yeah, think about think about this. I, on the front sight, my target's here. I watch my front sight. Oh nope, there's a target, and I bring it back. Mm. Right. So you're travel. Yes. Yeah, so maybe you swing too far. Maybe you don't swing far enough. Um, and then what happens when you do that? As soon as you get that bounce, when you go to stop at the end, where maybe you go past, where you slam the gun too hard, you're like, oh, oh there it is. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is tension. So those are the three things we're going to work on right now. Precision, eyes move, then the gun, and not being tense. So when you watch me just like transition the gun around between these targets, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you just watch me move the gun. What do you notice about that? You're not going to hurt my feelings. That was slow. It looks slow, right? When we add ammo, is it going to be slow? It's gonna be slower. I think so. I know Ben. I know he's fucking with me. I really need to see that. Absolutely am. Okay. Uh, so again, I'm gonna do it dry a couple times, and then I'll just do it with ammo. So again, where did I put my timer? I'm so sorry. Okay, so again, just watch the gun. The gun's kind of the important part. One more. Okay, now try it with ammo. slow down at all when you had the ammo in it yeah okay so i moved the gun at the same speed regardless of having ammo or not you look at the targets they look good they're all a's no yes. big deal right so the thing i want you to key in on is let's say if i want to try to do this faster what's wrong with this i'm gonna really try to get after it and see if i can get the gun moving quicker You're just muscle really really precise. yeah what happened wrong the overshoot? Yeah, you like on that target, I brought the gun too far, then I brought the gun back. And then what happens? That ends up taking up time, right? Because the whole goal of doing this is if you move the gun to a precise spot, I'm looking here, as soon as the gun gets there, I just fire immediately. And if you have extra muscle, you know, oh, I'm watching the sight come across, it goes too far, it comes back, I have to wait. It's all gonna add to your time. So again, I just wanna suggest the precision, bringing the gun to exactly where you wanna go, and then we're gonna work on shooting immediately when the sight gets there. So for the first drill, it'll be pretty easy. The target difficulty is gonna ramp up as we continue. Cool? Okay, all right. Two guys in the line and we'll get going. Things have got a little bit more difficult. Yeah, yesterday. Yes, just like exactly. Your, just like okay, opinion, so what changes now when we're shooting this compared to the last scenario? You gotta be, gotta ramp up the precision on some of these. Absolutely you did, you do. What's the other thing you should be thinking about before you step up the line, load your gun and start blasting? Where I want to look on the targets with no shoots. Steve, I'm glad to have you here. Yes, that's important. So when you look at a stage and you see stuff like this, you should not be like thinking about it as you're shooting the stage. Would you guys agree with that? Yes. I think we've probably all done that at some point. Eat yeah, that's all part of your visualization. Yes. Stage or eat the seeds. So I got this target as a group. Where should you probably be holding from like, shooting from there? Kind of right upper, corner of the A box. Yeah, upper upper right corner of the A box. Okay. How else, how do you know? Uh, I'll, throw, I'll back up a little bit. How do you know where to hold? Well, I know like when I fuck up, it's either down or left. Okay, so that would be prior training and experience. Yes. So I've done this in practice. I'm like, yep. I know where I look, no problem. If I look at this target and I'm like, ah, I'm not so sure about this. 
Maybe I end up holding up here. Maybe I hold off a little bit more. Maybe I hold center of brown. How do you know when to do that? Like what Andrea said, it's from practice. So you set stuff up like this in practice. You pick a very precise hold point, which is why we talked about precision before. I see that. I'm like, yep, that is the spot. I look with my eyes. So we kind of talked about it earlier. It's like using a mouse pointer, right, on your computer. So vision tells your, your mouse pointer where to go. So if I'm done for the day, like, hey, it's five o'clock, I'm ready to call it. And I go to like my time clock at my computer and I'm like, okay, there's the okay box to, to punch out. I'm not like, oh, I really want to get out of here. Like, okay, like you can't do that, right? It wouldn't make any sense. I wouldn't just throw the mouse. Instead, I'd just be like, oh, there's the okay box. I want to punch out. Like I just move the, the, my eyes go there. The pointer shows up there and I just click on it, right? No big deal. Shooting this is going to be the same way. Question, so you said, you kind of gave it, so if you're in a match where you're going to hold based on practice, do you change that for practice, like holding more in the center? Yeah, you sure could. Maybe like, I would really like to get those A's. If I could, I really would. So I work on it in practice then, and then I, you know, I keep training on it. I'm like, yes, practice has shown me I can do that. Okay. Or I set up this tomorrow, and I'm constantly pushing them into the no shoot. And then when I get to a match and I see that, I'm like, oh, I remember doing that in practice. It did not work out the way I wanted to. So I'm going to hold off a little bit. Does that make sense? So where, like on that one right there, where do you hold in practice? Like what's ideal? Thought you were never going to ask. <laughs> where do you guys think as a group, where would you hold on this target? Just inside Center the perf. I'm shooting at the perf on the A. Yeah. And it also would depend on your power factor, right? So if you're shooting major, maybe, I don't care if I get C, maybe it's the AC line. If I'm shooting minor and it's close and I feel comfortable, maybe I'm going to shoot the A's, you know? Like, Probably holding the AC line on that is probably reasonable for most people. But again, it's kind of difficult. same thing here, same thing there. Kind of the it becomes really important on a target like this is not using all your muscles like I talked about and throwing the gun around. Why would that be on this target? You'll over transition to the no shoot. Yeah, of course. So, I'm gonna shoot these targets. Like, look, look, like, oh, I'll really get some speed. I'll really get to that target quickly. Then yes, I drive the gun just a little bit too far, and the next thing you know, yeah, you, you know, alpha mic, whatever, no shoot, get the idea. So okay, uh, demo it for you once. We'll have you guys get after it. So again, just watch the gun. There's no tension. I'm just gonna look at the spot and shoot the shoot the target. extra hard i didn't fling the gun extra hard i'm just like hey i'll look at the spot when my gun shows up there i'll shoot it does that make sense to everyone yeah. the other part i should add is why i had doing dry training before on the range like doing this dry, is this productive at all is this helpful like do you think do you need bullets to get better at this no 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 dry, tra dry training before helps. why pardon me why it just it, for me, I can make sure that I'm I'm aimed at that point where I want to shoot, and then how smooth my transitions are coming across. Exactly right. So how about how about this for a thought? When I'm doing this thing live, and the gun's going off, and I'm trying to hold on to it, and I'm trying to you know watch my sights and all this kind of stuff, the gun's blasting in front of my face. That distracts you, right? It's a lot of excess noise. So by doing this without pressing the trigger, like what I had you guys before, all I do is just watch where the sights are going. Right? And if I swing the gun too far and it has to come back, being very sensitive to that, being hypercritical of that, is going to show you a lot more. So that's why dry fire on the range is quite good. So that's why when you guys are doing this, again, you'll do a dry a few times, you'll do it live, and you'll do a dry a few times. So while you're doing it dry, I would appreciate it. Very, very sensitive, very critical of where your sight's going, because that's, that's telling you what's happening when you have bullets in it too. Cool? All right. So you guys take a crack at it. Okay. Uh, what did dry training teach us? Like without pressing the trigger. The bullets are distracting. The bullets are distracting. Well said, yes. Uh, what else? How about wherever you look is where the sights show up, hopefully, right? Ideally. So, ideally. So this becomes very important. Of course, we have closer transitions. Now we're going to do transitions that are a little bit farther. Uh, so I'll just transition the gun the same way I did before, and you guys tell me what you think. So. 
that look okay? Why not? It's slow. It's really cool, slow. Yeah, at that point, it is too slow because you have a lot of distance to cover. How do we fix that? We've got to get some muscle on the gun, right? You're going to have to throw it a little bit. Kick it up Initially a muscle. Initially a muscle, yes. Andreas is so handy. Um, what happens if you muscle the gun the whole way? You're going to over transition. You hit the no shoot. <laughs> maybe it, maybe it like comes here, break one shot, you bounce the gun back, shoot a second shot there. And who knows, your guess is as good as mine where the gun goes. It's going to be crazy. So, it's going to be crazy, yes. How about for control, juice it like half the way and then just let the gun glide into the target. So think about it, like, if you're in your car, hypothetically, and you see a bear on the road, uh, as Jared will tell us, or you see Jared on the road either way, uh, you know, you smash on the brakes really hard and you keep the brakes held, what happens? Lock up. When, when you stop, right? So if you're like, oh, that appears to be, you know, a Sasquatch on the road, you slow down, you know? You just you hit the brakes a little bit, you start to slow down, you get to the end, you just release off, you come to a nice stop, right? We're gonna do the same thing here with white transition. So again, watch the gun. The gun's the interesting part. So again, I'm juicing the gun maybe halfway, something like that, and then it just glides in. Uh, it's very important, again, that your eyes go first and the gun follows. So when I'm bringing the gun, my eyes go to a very specific spot where I want the sights to show up. Then what do you know? The sights just show up where I'm looking, and then when that happens, you can start shooting immediately. Um, that also might seem slower, but it actually saves you time because... As soon as the gun gets right here and I just shoot immediately, compared to being really fast when I move the gun, it comes over here, I'm like, no, no, whoa, don't do that. Then I bring the gun back here and then I decide to fire, that's actually gonna be slower. It's gonna add time from you moving the gun too far and then needing the gun. Uh, I'll do sorry. it live. Go ahead, sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. Are you, are, do you uh, prep the trigger on transitions like this? You... No. No? I do not. Okay. Uh, with your Glock, maybe it's different. Sensitive trigger. Okay. Uh, yeah. He's thinking of falling down when he's in the when he's in the the whammy burger. He's like, whoa! He's like sensitive trigger. But anyway, so uh, no, I do not. Okay. I just like I just wait. And when the gun gets there, I'll, I'll fire when the gun gets there. So. Then you jam on it. That. It didn't look that fast, but on a timer, I think it'll actually be okay. Yeah, it's not, not going to look uh, fast ever, I don't think. What's that? I'm sorry? I don't think a wide transition like that's ever going to look fast. No. But how about the precision? That was pretty baller. Yeah, yeah. like I just, that was okay, not, I wasn't pushing at all. Yeah. I just look at the spot, I bring the gun there. When the gun gets to where I want, I just shoot the gun. No magic. So as we get, as we continue, the way to get fast at this is doing it immediately. So as soon as the sight gets to where I want, then I fire. We have two setups and uh, take a crack at it. Okay. Uh, okay, I've been beating in your head for the last hour and 45 minutes. You need to have precision. When do you not need to have ultra precision? Easy targets like this, right? But do you still have to see something? Yeah. Yes, I helped you. I coached you a little bit. What do you need to see on a target like this? Anybody? Your, your hands in front of your face. Sli slide nay zone. How about it's something different for everybody? And that whatever that means to you. So yeah, maybe it's outline of the gun. Maybe it's a flash of your fiber of your front sight. Uh, you know, whatever that means to you. But we don't want to over aim on this target, right? right. But you still have to respect it. Because what happens if you don't respect it? Drag on, drag off. So notice we saw before on some of the partials where like you shoot here very carefully. You're bringing the gun here, you shoot too early. So it goes like bang, bang. That would be drag on, right? So I'm I'm shooting before I get the gun to the target. Or this target's easy. I really don't have to pay that much attention. I'm just going to blast this target and then be very careful there. So what happens? I go bang, bang, because I'm starting to move the gun before I'm done shooting it. Also, we've talked about vision this whole time. Vision is still super critical, even on these easy targets. How could you miss it? It's so close. Target here, target here. Bam, bam. And then like I go... Bam, and like while I'm shooting the second shot, I don't really have to aim. I'm just gonna get going so I can get here quicker. So like bang, bang, and then you go over here. So you pull off then. You're not looking at what you're doing until you're done shooting the target. So regardless of 
easy target, hard target. It's at 500 yards, it's at two yards. You still have to look at what you're doing until you're done shooting the target. Okay, cool. So uh, I'll demo this one for you and then we'll have you guys take a crack at it. Fucking awful, redo it. <laughs> okay. Does that all make sense to everyone? Okay, yeah, cool. What's that? I'm sorry? Nothing. Okay. So, the way to be quick on this is like on this target. When the sights gets where you want it, you see that flash of fiber, you see the outline of the gun, your arms, whatever that means to you, you send it. But even when you're setting on the close targets, my eyes still stay focused on what I'm doing. When I'm done shooting the second shot, then my eyes go to the next thing. Okay, I'll give it a try.